Hi and welcome to another uh, Discord inspired tutorial. Um, this one was a chap who wanted, whilst his footage was playing, to have an image sort of come in, stay for a minute and go out again. Now he also wanted it to come in maybe from the left and right or the top and he was having to go into Fusion each time to set up the uh, transform etc. So I basically made a macro for him um, and we are going to have a look and see if we can make the same macro. So the macro does something like this. So you bring it into your timeline, set the duration to whatever you wanted, say five seconds and we would load an image so go to your browser pick whatever image you want to pop up and once it caches you will see the effect so basically the image comes down, goes back up again. The image can be resized. You can add a drop shadow to it. And you can have the effect with or without motion blur. Right, my render cache not being smart. It's supposed to be smart, but it's not being today. One of the joys of 17, it seems to be, the cache system seems to be a bit messed up on 17 for some reason. Um, but anyway, you get the general idea. So once you've decided what your image is going to look like as it comes in, you can also decide where it's coming from. So you can have it from the top, bottom, left or right, and it will go back the same way. So yeah, we're going to have a go and see if we can make this. So as normal, the first thing we need to do is find our Fusion Comp. Uh, I have it set down here as a favourite because I use it so much. But if you don't, come to the top, Effects Library, come to Effects. And at the top of your effects lists, you've got Fusion Comp, bring your Fusion Comp in. Now I'm going to set this to three seconds, which is the minimum length that we can have this effect. At the minute, this is um, resizable, responsive, that's the word I was looking for. So it can be any length you want it from three seconds onwards. Uh, but to get things to run smoothly, I tend to build in the minimum size that I need. So we'll go to three seconds. Put your playhead over your Fusion Comp and come into Fusion. So we're in Fusion. If you're working in 16, your screen may look slightly different. Uh, you won't have these sort of pretty icons and things here for example uh, but the basic principles are the same it works for both so the first thing we're going to need is some way to bring our image in and for that I'm going to use a loader node so shift space bar type loader and in you go it will immediately ask you for an image to so just stick an image in to keep it happy for the time being so we've got our image now because we could be loading any size image. What we need to do is make this conform to our timeline. So the way we're going to do that is bring in the background node and simply merge our image onto the background. And then it stays proportionate to the background. The size control that we had in our macro come from the merge. We've got our size control here. And we will take that into our macro at the end. The other thing we had is the shadow and that's simply select 
your loader node, shift space bar, and I can't remember if I used drop shadow or shadow, I think it was drop shadow. Type drop shadow and pop it in. Uh, no, it might have been just shadow node, let me try that. Yeah, that was the one I used. So that's all set up ready so that we can adjust the size and we can add a shadow. Now the next part is to get the animation itself going and to do that we're going to use transform nodes. Now we're going to use four transform nodes so we'll bring them in one, two, three, four and we're going to label these to change the name of a node simply press select it and press F2 and then we can rename them he says I don't know what happened there So, so we've got our four directions and we're going to pipe the same image into each transform node. Okay so now we've got our transforms in place and labelled we're now going to animate them. So we'll start with the top so make sure top is selected and put it in the viewer. So top is going to bring our image in from the top of the screen, hold it and then take it back out to the, the top of the screen. So we're going to start at frame zero and the top of the screen is a Y value of 1.5. So we're going to put it to 1.5 and we're going to set a keyframe. Now we're going to come forward half a second. Now for me that's 15 frames because I'm on a 30 frame per second timeline. For you it could be different. So up to frame 15. I'm going to drop Y back to 0.5. That automatically sets our second keyframe. Now we need to come 15 frames from the end of our clip. So we're on 89. So 79, so 74. So we come to frame 74. We set a keyframe, but we don't change any values that way for that couple of seconds the picture stays on the screen. Then we come to the end of the clip and we change this back to 1.5. And we should have this effect. Okay, so next we're going to do the bottom. So to drop it off the bottom of the screen, again we're going to be concentrating on the Y value for center and this time it's going to be minus 0 0.5 to get it off screen. So select bottom, drag bottom into the viewer, come to frame 0 and set your Y value to minus 0 0.5. Set a keyframe, come to frame 15 set your Y value to 0.5, automatically sets the keyframe, come to frame 74, set a keyframe but don't change anything, and then to your last frame and minus 0.5 again, and it'll drop it off the bottom. Left and right, the Y axis is going to stay at 0.5, and it's the X axis that we're going to change this time, so select left, drag it into the viewer, come to frame 0, set your x value to minus 0.5, set your first keyframe, come to frame 15, make it 0.5, this automatically sets a keyframe, come to 74, 
set another keyframe but don't change your values and then come to the end of your clip and make it minus 0.5 so now we're in and out from the right uh, from the left sorry and finally we'll do the right so select right pop it into the viewer now to take your picture off to the right your x value will be 1.5 so back to frame 0 1.5 and set your first keyframe 15 back down to 0.5 to bring it in 74 keyframe so that it holds position and to the end of your frame and back to 1.5 so now we have in from the right and out, in from the left and out, top and bottom. Okay now the fun starts. We've got the basic mechanics of what we need here. We've got our four options. We've automated bringing an image onto and off the screen. Now what we need to be able to do in the macro is select which of those we want. To do that I'm going to start using some expressions and I'm going to set up a user control. Um, the user control can be set up in any node but for convenience I'm going to bring in a custom tool node. So shift space and type custom and we're looking for custom tool. Don't worry about all this, I'm going to ignore it. It's just an... I think there's probably ways that I can use all this kind of gobbins, but to be honest, I think it's a bit overcomplicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my own control that I can then make available in the macro. And to do that, I'm going to right click on the custom tool and I'm going to come to where it says edit controls and select that. This brings up the edit control dialog box. What this lets you do is you can edit any of the controls that are already in the node or you can add a new one. And I'm going to add a new one. And I'm going to call it from, as in from which direction is your picture coming. So once you've typed in the title, click on number because it's going to be a number. I'm going to change the page from user. If you scroll down, you see controls, which is this tab here. It's already open, so it's going to put the control at the bottom of this list of, of settings. So click on controls. The default value is going to be zero. It's always going to be an integer because it's going to be a drop down list. And we're going to have four choices. The first choice is going to be number zero. And the fourth choice is going to be number three. So you've got zero, one, two, and three. So four choices. Next, we're going to come down to input control and we're going to find combo control. Now we need to label our various choices and they are going to be the same as we have here. So we're going to have top bottom left and right So you've got your four controls. Click OK and now you see we have our control here with our four options. Now what we need to be able to do is pass the right transform node to our media out. And to do that I'm going to use a dissolve node as a switch. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click away from any of my nodes, shift space and type dissolve. What a dissolve node does is basically switches between two images. The green input is the foreground and the yellow input is the background. So if we pipe that to our media out for a minute, put the media out in the viewer, so and select the dissolve node. You see we've got the slider that says background and foreground. So at the minute it's set to the foreground, which means that whatever comes into the foreground is what's viewed in your output. At the minute that is the top animation. So if we play it, we've got our top down animation coming in. Let me just get rid of that because it will confuse us. However, if we now slide it the other way, we have our bottom animation. So what we need is to be able to tell this dissolve node when to be on the foreground and when to be on the background. And to do that, we're going to use expressions that reference our custom tool and our from control. To make life easier so you're not typing as much, I'm going to rename my custom tool to C1. Now if we come back to our first dissolve node and we're going to say we're going to set up an expression that's based on this. What I'm going to do just so we can keep coming back to it, if you select your control node and come up to the top of the inspector, you've got a little pin. If you click that, it will keep this on view regardless of what node you press. So it's always there so we can get back to it. So in your dissolve node, which is this little bit at the top, is the controls for the dissolve node. And then you've got your custom tool down the bottom. What I'm going to do is where it says background and foreground, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select expression. What this lets me do is type an expression into this box. And what I'm going to do is say if, and if in this instance is spelt with two I's for some reason, don't ask me why, but it is. You're going to open brackets C1 dot from two equal signs zero. Now I'll put a space either side of that then. So what you're saying here is if C1 from, so if this control is on the first option which is top is zero comma then effectively you want a value of one. If it's not on zero you want a value of zero and then you close your brackets. So what that's saying is imagine top, bottom, left, right are numbers. So you'd have zero, one, two and three. So if top selected it's zero. So if from equals zero then set this value to one, so foreground which is our top. If it's not one, then it's going to set the value to zero, which is our bottom animation. So if we change this to one, you see that this is now changed to zero. So top is zero, which meets the requirements of the if statement and returns a value of 1. Anything else will return a value of 0. So top is 0 
on our number list and so it returns a value of 1 anything else will return a value of 0 so that lets us switch between top and bottom what we're going to do now is put another dissolve that lets us switch between left and right so we're going to do the same click away from any nodes shift space bar dissolve we're going to put left into the top and right into the bottom so left into the green foreground right into the yellow background if you like I'm going to put that dissolve node into our viewer so now if we play through it's currently at 1 which is the foreground and so you're getting our left animation again if we switch it over you get your right animation so we're going to do the same thing we're going to set an expression and we're going to change we're going to right click on background foreground go to expression and type if again with two f's open brackets c1 from what i didn't mention the first time is you need to be case sensitive so our node is c1 with a capital c from has got a capital f so they need to match or else it all goes wrong space equals and this time we need to work out what left is in this case you've got 0 1 2 is left so if c1 from equals 2 comma which is the equivalent of then return a value of 1 if it isn't then return a value of 0 so if this is at 2 which is our left command so 0 1 2 3 left is 2 it returns a value of 1 anything else it returns a value of 0 so if you select left you get your left animation if you select right you get your right animation now we need one more dissolve node so that we know whether we're working with top bottom or left right so what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect that click away dissolve now this time we're going to put the output of our top bottom dissolve into the green foreground and we're going to put the output of our left right dissolve into the yellow background and we need one final expression on this dissolve node and that is again going to be background foreground right click expression again if with two eyes open brackets c1 dot from now this time we need to look for anything that's greater than 2 anything less than 2 so 0 and 1 will be focusing on this first dissolve node and your top bottom selection anything 2 or above is going to focus on the left right selection of dissolve 2 so what we're going to say is if c1 from is less than so a backwards facing arrow 2 then again return a value of 1 which will be the foreground of this dissolve node so it's following this path comma else return 0 which switches this dissolve to 0 which will be either of these two it gets a bit funky and complicated I know 
Um, so in theory, if we do top, we've got one. If we do bottom, it should stay at one. If we do left, it drops to zero and right will also drop to zero. Rewatch this a couple of times, it does make sense. It is complicated uh, trying to get your head around the sort of, I suppose it's logic maths, isn't it? I don't know. I'm an old man, it's a long time since I did maths. But it's basically logic. Uh, you're sort of saying if a certain condition is being met. Um, so these are basically act, acting as switches. So this switches between these two, this one switches between these two and the final one decides which of these two dissolve nodes is being passed through. If we now drag this dissolve node into our media out and put media out into our view screen and start playing. So at the minute it's set to right, so it goes on and off the right side of the screen. If we go to top, it will go on and off the top of the screen. left on and off the left and finally bottom on and off the bottom and that's basically all there is to it simples as a meerkat says that's probably a UK reference that anybody outside the UK will understand but don't worry okay We've got the basics in there. Um, what else did we have? We had our size, our shadow, our selection, motion blur. If you want to add motion blur. So to add motion blur, should you desire, what I did was I set, I'm gonna make the motion blur controls available but obviously you don't want four sets of motion blur controls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the motion blur in the top transform node, and then I'm going to reference that in the other three nodes so that you've got one motion blur, blur control on your macro. So select your top, come to the settings, and you've got motion blur here check motion blur now you've got your motion blur controls now what I want available is whether we can turn motion blur on and off and the quality and shutter angle of the blur so to do that for your other three transforms I'm going to right click on motion blur and I'm going to click publish and you get this little red dot appears to say that this is published I'm going to do the same for quality and shutter angle. Now all we need to do is come into our other transform nodes one at a time, so into bottom, come to settings, right click on motion blur and click connect to top and motion blur. Now because we already had motion blur set in top, it's now set in bottom I'm going to do the same connect quality and shutter angle so right click connect to top quality right click connect to top shutter angle and then you repeat that for the left and right transform nodes the right cool so now 
when we publish our macro all we need to worry about is our top node our top transform node and the others will automatically follow suit so that's basically your your tool if you like the last thing I did was add a keyframe stretcher which allows us once we put our macro onto the timeline to stretch it to whatever length it, you want um, and this instance it can go from three seconds to whatever so with dissolve 3 selected shift space bar and you're looking for keyframe stretcher now we need to set this up so to do that we go to the end of our comp and we see that it's 89 frames so source start is 0 source end will be 89 and we need to work out where our keyframes are so we've got keyframe at 15 and 74 so we want to stretch everything between those two so if we come to 16 and 73 and that will stretch anything between our two keyframe that's your basic I'm going to call it a title it goes in the titles folder but um, it's not a title but you can see it, your tool whatever you want to call it that's basically it with this command we can change where we're coming from so at the moment it's coming from the bottom this is our media out window that's this dissolve here which should be there so it's coming from the bottom we can go left and it will go left etc so it's all done and dusted so now we come to the bit where we actually make our macro now basically a macro will let you publish all these nodes as one single node it will let you access whatever controls you want the user or yourself to be able to access in this instance we're going to want to access controls from the loader node our merge node our custom tool node and our top node now if you just select oh, hang on I didn't mean to do that I'll try that again if you just select all the nodes and then right click go to macro and create macro you end up with a list of nodes that are a bit all over the shop so what I do is I select the nodes that I want controls from first so and in the order I want them to appear so the loader node is going to be at the top of our macro what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete that information because I don't want that in my macro so select the loader node first next holding the command key down I'm going to select the merge node because I want the size control next I'm then going to select my custom tool so that I can have my uh, drop down list next then I'm going to select the shadow so that we can control the shadow and finally I'm going to select the top which will let us control the motion blur you can then go through and select the remaining nodes in whatever order you want so now we've got all our nodes selected I'm going to again right click go to macro create macro now we have the nodes that we're interested in in the right order so the loader the merge the custom tool the shadow and finally the top transform node so if you click on the little arrows it will open up all the things that you can have the user do if you like for the loader node the only thing that I'm interested in having the user do is to be able to 
navigate to and load a file or an image. So I'm going to click where it says clip and file name. Anything in this column is actually a label, you can change it if you want to, but we don't need to for this. So once you've done that, load it has turned red because there's a, an active control in it, you can close it. You can now open merge. Now the thing we need in the merge node is the size. That way if you bring in a little bitty image you can resize it, if you bring in a huge image you can shrink it down to fit the screen. So again, we check size and we can close the merge node. C1 is our custom tool. Now we don't want it to have an output, so we can uncheck that. And we don't want it to do any of this gubbins here. What we do want is right down at the bottom is our new control. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna change this to zero. I think when I was playing I left it on left or right, I can't remember, but anyway, zero is top down and I want it to default to that, so I've just changed that to zero. If it's at zero, great. Check from, and that will make the from control available in our macro. We can now can close C1, ignore all these bits here, and come to shadow, and in the shadow we want offset, softness and the shadows colour available. And we don't need to worry about anything else. Again, once you've got it, close it and finally top. Now top was our motion blur controls and they are not immediately visible because they're down here under this common tab. So if you click the little arrow to expand common scroll down you'll find motion blur here and we want motion blur quality and shutter angle and then you can close everything back up and that's all the controls we want in our macro if you now click close oh actually just can uh, cancel that a minute what i forgot to do is name it so name your macro whatever you want and then click close and yes we want to save it now when the save dialog box opens it defaults to the macro folder and we don't want to save it in the macro folder we want to save it in the titles folder of DaVinci Resolve. Now the path for that is going to ch vary from Mac to Windows. I'm working on Mac so I will demonstrate the Mac route. Uh, I'll put the Windows route in the description so that you can double check it but for me I come to Mac, hard drive, library, Change the orders, application support, black magic design, then you've got DaVinci Resolve, then you want Fusion, then you want to come down to Templates, Edit, and finally Titles. And once you get there, you can click Save. I'm not going to because I've already done it. I've already got this saved so I'm not going to replace it but you would click save and it would then save automatically to your titles folder so once you've saved your macro to your titles folder you need to restart resolve for it to see your new title and then when you come back into resolve you come up to your effects library, you come to titles and I'm going to search for it because I've got like a billion titles that I've collected from various places. If you've not done this before you'll only have one or two things here. Um, I've got lots so I'm going to search and 
I know it's called still anim. This is one I made that can be used on a 60 frame per second timeline. I've got a 30 frame per second timeline one and this is for a 24 second 24 frames a second timeline. Unfortunately I can't make it timeline in uh, frames per second independent. Uh, so if you work in various frame rates then you might need to sort of do this a few times in your different frame rates. Um, so this is the one we've just built, the 30 frames per second one. So as I said earlier, at the start you just drag it onto your timeline. That's the bug in 17. Um, change the clip duration to whatever you want, so 5 seconds. As I say, it can be as long or as short as you want it. It can be a minimum of three seconds, but it can be as long as you want. So once it's selected, you can come up to your inspector and see all the controls that we selected through our macro. So you've got the browse button here, which lets you load your image. Next, you have your size control, which will let you change the size of your image, the direction from which your image is going to appear and then we can add a shadow if you want to. You can change the shadow colour if you really want to and then you can elect to either have or not have motion blur and the strength of that motion blur As I say, my cation is up the creek. Some days it seems to work, some days it doesn't. Um, don't know why. The joys of working in beta software. So again, once you've sort of run it through a couple of times, it will cache. Uh, if you're on 16 and you've got your render cache in playback on Smart, it will probably do it anyway. Um, I say 17 is a bit funky to say the least but you get the idea and that's basically it um, I hope it made sense um, I guess the expression stuff can get a bit confusing um, if you get stuck either leave a comment below or what's probably easier is I will leave a link to the DaVinci Resolve Discord server that's uh, run by Jake Whip. Head over there and you can contact me fairly easily over there. I tend to be floating around there quite a lot uh, and I'll answer any questions I can. Um, yeah, as I say, hope you found it useful. Um, sorry I waffled on a bit, but I think the expression stuff needed to be sort of done as clearly as I could do it. Thank you for watching, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're not already, um, hit the like button, hit the notification bell and then you can get some more waffle next time I make a tutorial. Cheers!